I, I want to talk about uh, t- uh, TV shows being turned into movies. This week sees the release of The Equalizer, the latest of a uh, TV series. A lot of people don't even remember it was a TV show. It was a TV show from the 80s where it's basically if James Bond retired and became kind of like a, uh, a vigilante uh, uh, kind of A-team type guy in New York, that was him. Well, I just came up with the best movie idea ever. Vigilante. Ve- <laughs> it's all about a vegetable like, who goes out. I thought it was about me. We're gonna, do, you know. I thought it was just a really lazy vigilante. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great like, too. Hey, bro. It was like a couch potato. Really gonna get you like, some justice. <laughs> Sorry to totally <laughs> derail this conversation right, right off the bat, but um, so we so we have a bunch of uh, of uh, movies that have been turned, uh, TV shows that have been turned into movies. Um, Equalizer being the latest one. And I kind of want to ask you guys what uh, – I'm going to rattle off uh, examples of these because there have been so many. But, you know, most recently, 21 Jump Street and now 22 Jump Street. There were the Adams Family movies. And some people forget that there was a third one that was kind of a reboot. It was Tim Curry and Daryl Hannah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I think people forget it for a reason. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, so we've seen uh, a bunch of them. Let's see. There's been – and I'm leaving out things like uh, – the Star Trek movies that had Shatner in the crew because that was really more of a continuation. So, Thus, so I'd leave out Serenity as well. But the Star Trek reboot, I would include in this. These are the rules. These are so we have Beverly Hillbillies. There was Bewitched. There was Brady Bunch. There was Car Fifty Four. Fifty Four. Where are you, Charlie's Angels? Um, Dark Shadows. Not uh, to that. Dragnet. 1987's uh, Dragnet. Yeah. I, I have an interesting story about Dragnet. We were at a rodeo once when I was a kid, and there were, it, the, the rodeo was like right next to this. Um, you grew up in Wisconsin. No, I was in, it was in Wyoming. <laughs> I was on a trip, and there was this uh, there was this screen off to the right. There was like a it was like a drive-in movie theater, and so I watched instead of watching the rodeo, <laughs> I watched Dragnet on mute. <laughs> On, um, mute. Yeah. On, on mute. <laughs> so on mute. So that joke's really landed for you. Though. That's, <laughs> that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, there have been so many of them from like Fat Albert, The Fugitive, the only one I believe that's actually had a Best Picture nomination, Flintstones, Get Smart. Uh, uh, what the hell else has there been? Um, the Honeymooners. Yikes. That, that classic. Um, I Spy. The Leave It to Beaver, Lost in Space, McHale's Navy, Miami Vice, McHale's Navy, The Mod Squad, oh and, yeah, Mod Squad, uh, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> oh yeah, Claire Danes. <laughs> My favorite Martian. I forgot that there was that was Jeff Bridges was in that one. The Avengers, the, Avengers, the other the Avengers, Avengers. The other Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Sergeant Bilko. Oh Police God. squad got turned into naked gun, but that's really more of a continuation. Yeah, and then so that doesn't fit in your that rules. That doesn't fit in my rules. The Saint, but that was actually based on a series of books, so it's kind of a cheat, I suppose. Scooby Doo, really? S- <laughs> the Smurfs, <laughs> Murphy, uh, Starsky and Hutch, yeah, State of easily. Play, The Sweeney. The, now we're getting all Britishy. SWAT, uh, uh, da, 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 The Untouchables. Twilight Zone. The Untouchables. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. And that was oh, nominated yeah. for Best Picture? No, 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 no. I'm not. These aren't. These are ones that movies that were. Uh, no, that wasn't. Uh, these are, you know, these are. I just rattle off all the movies that were based on TV shows. Wild Wild West. But you said that Fugitive was the only one that was nominated for Best yeah. Picture. And Untouchables wasn't? No. Oh, I, I thought it was for some reason. Nope. Nope. Um, all right. So, so what do we you think? know, we've. Th- that's a lot of. There are a lot of crappy movies. ones in there. A lot of crappy ones. What do you guys think are, um, first of all, do you have any particular favorites, ones that you actually thought were good, like the 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 best and worst, if you will, of these TV shows that have been turned into movies? I, I mean, think it's a lot easier to rattle off the few that were probably good than, it, you know. Well, a lot of them are really bad, but I think um, for me, the standouts on that list are, you know, obviously 21 Jump Street, I think, mm-hmm. you know, it, but... I think a lot of the ones that stand out for me are things that went, they use the the building blocks of that show to tell a different story. Even right. Brady Bunch movie yeah. was 
uh, pretty ingenious at the time because yeah. you're just like, oh, I don't know, this is a Brady Bunch movie. But I went to see it. It was really entertaining. Actually, the sequel wasn't bad either. Yeah. I thought that was really funny. That was like the precursor to the 21 and 22 Jump Streets where yeah, they really like yeah, yeah. played on, they made fun of what it was and it became kind of meta. You know, yeah. like they they rolled into what it was, but they also made fun of what's ridiculous about those movies. And yet those that TV approach shows. doesn't always work either because you look at uh, Starsky and Hutch. Yeah poked fun at what was a serious show the yeah. way it, it was kind of like you know dragnet did as well the the 87 dragnet movie um so you saw starsky and hutch and and dragnet kind of i mean fail at even though dragnet is a movie i've kind of grown to like it was it was not liked at its time right um fail where 21 jump street succeeded doing the exact same thing you know i mean i think it's let me let me just there are very obvious failures in that mix but i'm going to name one that is probably my least favorite because i, th I think it's just the worst adaptation didn't capture it <laughs> at all is ian flux i know oh, that's oh like yeah. so bad so bad the movie was so bad and the show was so awesome yeah, <laughs> um, but it was a really hard show to adapt. You shouldn't. Uh, I feel like that show should never have been adapted it for have. American audiences. You know, I, it would have been way better if it was just like, I don't. I don't even know how you could have made that better. I don't. <laughs> I, I, but the thing is, like, you can't. You know, that's not a thing that you can make. I don't know, maybe somebody could, but but I feel like they tried to make it into this big budget sort of event film, and it's like, that's not what is cool about Ian Flux. It's I'd want to watch like somebody like Aronofsky put a movie yeah. like that together, you know? Wow. like That would be an amazing sort of... Why don't we run the studios? <laughs> I've often wondered this. Uh, one, one that, uh, you know, I'm mentioning a lot of comedies, but one of them also that sticks out for me is Adam's Family. Like, that kind of mm -hmm. came out of nowhere, and I thought it was really good, like, especially for the time... Um, when I had very little expectation of that movie being good, it was it was really surprising. And then the dramatic tip, I think, Jim mentioned the Fugitive, yeah, and Untouchables. The Untouchables, yeah. I couldn't even believe that that was based on a show, but like Untouchables is so good, even now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I have kind of a soft spot for Remind Me Vice just because I love that Michael Mann came back and did it, and that they took it seriously, that they didn't make fun of the show because the show really was for its time. Very groundbreaking, and yeah, it went off the rails in the last two seasons. But the the first two and a half seasons of that show were really unlike anything else on TV at that at that time. Yeah, and a lot of the things that they did, people seemed to just think it was all catch, but it really wasn't. If you look back at that show, it was a noir show. It was a it was a, a film noir show, but with pastel coloring, and it was a very there were a lot of existential kind of things on that show and it was it was pretty it was pretty cool i mean it, was, it really was um but y you look at a lot of the ones that didn't work like honeymooners like it, n there was no audience for that show so they they changed the demographic to try and appeal to a, uh, a new audience a broader audience so you, you 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 know you wanted to uh basically make something that was uncool cool again and it didn't work because it was still yeah. just a bad story a bad movie I, I think those kind of things are just like dennis the menace it's like yeah. who had this idea and why did it get made in this era and like you know who's that audience but but to be fair honestly like i really didn't think that 21 jump street would work yeah. as a movie at all and i thought that yeah. until the moment i sat down in my seat and i watched it and i was howling the whole time because i think it's it just always comes down to like first of all i feel like there is a certain alchemy to filmmaking where there's so many different moving parts and you can have all of the right pieces together and it sure. just doesn't work at the end of the day. And yeah. I don't know that there is a definitive answer for always for why, but with something and the same thing for when it does. But I feel like it's, you know, you're, you're looking for some magic formula. And I'm sure that studio heads and the reason that we don't aren't studio heads is because if we threw money <laughs> at an EM flex movie, it would lose <laughs> so much money. Yeah, um, that's true. But I but feel it did even then. But it did at even least then. We'd have a piece at of least art. we'd have we'd have a beautiful <laughs> yeah. Eon Flux movie. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, I, but I feel like it's just like you need a good, st strong story, a good cast, and and good di and a you, strong direction. Do you think that uh, movies based on cartoons, animated series, tend to have a worse track record or just lend themselves to being worse movies? Because you look at the Scooby Doo movies, uh, Fat Albert. Um, the Smurfs movies, yes. Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, sure. Some of them are blending CGI characters and live action things, but those are all pretty. Uh, the Flintstones, I mean, those are all uh, pretty hated movies. Then you get. Yeah, but if, if, it depends who you ask. If you're looking at the Chipmunks or you're looking at the Smurfs, kids love those movies and they make a ton of money. So it's like 
They might not be for us or our sensibilities, but th those were successful at least. They made two Inspector Gadget movies. The squeakwall. Yes, wall. they did. The squeakwall. I just want to keep saying the squeakwall. Two, oh. in, uh, two Inspector Gadgets. Uh, the squeakwall. And then they, uh, and then you have some really, uh, you know, when they do take it serious and they do genre ones like Lost in Space. Yeah. Whoops. Really bad. Wild, uh, Wild Wild West played it for for last, but you know, yeah. it's not like TV. Uh, movie adaptations of TV shows have been done on the cheap. Uh, like you, you look at Lost in Space, Wild yeah. Wild West, um, you know, a, 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 a Dark Shadows. Yeah. Uh, I feel you like know? Wild Wild West fell down because they were trying to make it, like they had Will Smith attached, and I think it was coming off of Men in Black somewhat, and so they were like, let's make it kind of like Men that, in but in the yeah. but in the Wild West, and it just felt weird. But they the Wild but the Wild West uh, Wild Wild West show had those kind of anachronistic gizmos, yeah. but not to the level of. But it just went crazy with the CG yeah. and everything. I I think that they that crazy one just got CG. got out of balance. You yeah. know, I mean, I look, I think that satire is a really hard thing to pull off. And very few people can do it. And I think that what a lot of the ones that are trying to be comical are trying to be satirical often, mm -hmm. you know, and it, I think it worked in the Brady Bunch and it definitely yeah, works sure. in 21 and 22 Jump Street. And, and you we've know got chips coming up too. And we have chips, Dak Shepard and Michael Pena uh, going to be in that. Uh, I just wanted to mention one last, uh, uh, one last uh, animated uh, show that became an awful live action movie. Well, hybrid Yogi Bear. And in A Team, there was another Rudy. one that was that was a big flop. But I got to say, I actually liked the A Team movie, and I thought it did a fun job of well, I didn't trying yeah, to capture it, it. Was not a it was not a failure. Like these, uh, some things yeah. just utterly fail. You know, yeah. like A Team might not have been the perfect movie, but it was not like oh my, wow. The, the, this the, is my a biggest wreck. my biggest issue with A Team movie was I didn't like uh, what is it Rampage Jackson who played. Mm -hmm. B.A., he wasn't scary enough. Like, B.A. had to be the guy that was going to lose it at any point, and he just wasn't. For a guy named Rampage, he seemed pretty mellow. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, for a man named he, Rampage. He was just more of kind of a, kind of a, a argumentative dude. Jackson is more <laughs> like it, you know? It wasn't really, I wanted Rampage, and I didn't get that. I, I feel like with something like the, even the Fugitive captured that show really well, but it also just was such a tightly enclosed story, but the untouchables almost like to me, I don't even think they were worried about the fact that it was based on a TV show. I mean, like it's, I, a, it's yeah. obviously a true story, but they, yeah. they uh, first of all, it threw out a lot of the elements of the TV show. Yeah. And it sure as hell threw out the, the actual historical stuff. There were people getting killed in that movie that lived for several years after <laughs> that didn't right. die in that. Ma I like it really. The only, the only, uh, uh, real guys are basically Ness and Capone. Yeah. And uh, some of the other guys are kind of sort of based on the other members of the, yeah, but of the right, actual Untouchables. But, but to but some, but some degree, rightly so, because it's yeah. just it's focused on telling this story yeah. really well. Yeah. You know, and that's all it's focused on. It's really not worried about. Well, it's kind of like um, and this is boy, this will date me. But uh, uh, like uh, John Ford, when he did My Darling Clementine, is the battle of uh, the gunfight at the OK Corral, and it's got nothing to do with the actual. Like, did the, the Are you history. saying that you were at the gunfight at the OK Corral? I'm just <laughs> saying, people, dating. vampire <laughs> Nicholas <laughs> Cage, vampire <laughs> Nicholas Cage ain't the only one that's been around forever. Oh man! So, all right. So um, that movie is great, by the way. If you have never seen vampire it, vampire Nicholas Cage, my darling Clementine. It is. Um, all right. Well, uh, you know, uh, favorite uh, uh, and best and worst TV movies. We'll see where the equalizer ends up on that list. So I've, what do you say your best is? Um, I would say Fugitive. Uh, I think it's the one that stays with me. I think it was just an, uh, um, a great movie that worked on a number of levels and captured the spirit and the, 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 the premise of the original show. Oddly enough, uh, people seem to forget that it, it had a, a sequel, U.S. Marshals. Yeah. Mm. So, hey, Jim. Yes. I don't care. <laughs> She's trying it's to do Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee Jones. Jones. He's like, at the, at the, I'm innocent. I don't, I don't care. care. He has his hands up. All right. 